What is going on everybody? We are live today in this video. We're going to talk about the Legome Mini. We're going to talk all about this grinder, what it is, why I'm so interested, why I had to go live to share my first impressions with all of you. But before we do that, uh, hi, how's it going everybody? Hope you guys are doing so well, so well tonight. This is the second live this week. And so I'm really excited to be able to do these, really excited to be able to connect with you. So before we go any further, before we dive into the Legone, before we talk all about its specs and what I love and what I don't love, do me a huge favor. Just scroll right down right now, smash that like button and let me know in the chat if you're excited for this video, let me know what you're drinking today, what coffee, and let me know how you're doing. I, I read every single comment, so it would mean the world and I'll respond to as many as possible. At the end of this live, I'm gonna try and answer any Q and A that I'm able to answer as well. So if you have any questions during this live, feel free to ask those down below. And before we get started, let me know how my sound is in the comments. We've had some issues in the past few lives and let's get started. Okay, well this is the Legome P64, or sorry, not the P64, this is the Legome Mini. The P64 is actually this model right here. This is the Legome P64 and the Mini is Legome's smaller version. If we scroll down to this right here, this is the Mini. Now the Mini is new to the market. I think it came out this past spring and it was well received, but there's been some updates to this grinder since its launch and things that brought my attention to this grinder. And so first off, some disclaimer, uh, this was sent to me by my friend, Josh. This wasn't sent to me by option O, just my friend uh, here in Canada. He's lending this to me for a few weeks, but after using it for a few days, I actually went out and purchased another one of these, but a different model. So stick around, I'll tell you about that at the end. So let's talk about this. What is this all about? What is going on with this, this grinder right here? So this option O makes fantastic premium quality coffee grinders. And this is their newest one. Now option O has traditionally made more expensive coffee grinders. The P64 is a few thousand dollars, uh, the P100 even more than that. And they have some other options as well. And so this is the first option that option O has uh, provided that is decent value. Now this grinder right here comes in at $319. So where does this fit in the world of grinders today for coffee? Uh, and why is this so intriguing? $319 is that sweet spot around the same price as the fellow Ode, uh, the Virtuoso from Baratza, and even hand grinders like the K plus, the C40, and some premium experiences like that. And so does this live up to that, that bracket? That is a pretty tight competition. How does it compare to those grinders? Well, let's talk about all of that. And uh, sorry, let's talk about the specs of this grinder and then we'll come back to all of that. So uh, option O, this looks very traditional to their other grinders. Now, first off, can we talk about how small this thing is? Can I zoom in here? Okay, let me see. For V60 for comparison and size. Uh, I don't know if that does justice. This thing is tiny. Literally guys, this is this is like a hand grinder. This is like a hand grinder with a small motor and that's literally what it is. This thing is made of all aluminum, but it's not light. You look at this thing and it's like, that thing is going to move. If I touch that, it's gonna fall over. No, this thing is pretty heavy. Now let's start from the top and work down. Uh, and by the way, before I go any further, this is not a review. I'm gonna release a full review of this grinder and the one that I just purchased later on. If you're interested in that, let me know by writing that in the comments or, or leaving a like. Uh, but this, this is not a review. This is just an overview. On the top here, this is where you would place your beans. Now this is strictly a single dose grinder. This is not something that uh, you would do where you would fill up with beans and then you can press on demand. That, that's not gonna, that's just not gonna happen here. This is you, you pour in the coffee that you want to grind and on demand, it will grind that coffee. Now on the top here, you can see the burr set. You saw it in the B-roll in the beginning of this video too. You can slightly see it there. Um, this can hold about 25 grams in my experience, depending on the bean. It's not a lot of volume there, but that's totally fine. It's a small grinder. Now, what's most intriguing about this grinder is its burr set. This one here is a 38 millimeter burr set, you know, pretty traditional. It's conical, not flat, unlike the P64. But this burr set, this is the same burr set from Optional's hand grinder, the Remy, but also very intriguingly, the same burr set as you find on other hand grinders, like Varia's hand grinder, like uh, Vessel's hand grinder, 
and the value hand grinder in Time Wars Chestnut C2. Now, if you haven't watched my budget friendly hand grinder comparison, please do, because I talk about this burr set in depth. So you'll have an understanding of the flavor profiles that this creates. And, you know, without going into a review here, I'm pretty satisfied with the results, but I'll talk more about that in my in-depth review. Uh, this has a motor right here and this uh, dosing cup, again, it kind of looks, I don't know if you can see it on camera. It kind of looks flimsy. It kind of feels like it's going to fall off, but it's not. It's magnetic. All right. Satisfyingly enough that snaps in place. Um, overall, this is, this is pretty neat. Now, one of the most intriguing parts about this grinder is this uh, grind adjustment system. And this part right here is, uh, this is stepless. And so that's really, especially for this price range, that's pretty unseen. All right, you, you barely see that on hand grinders. Uh, you definitely don't see that on grinders until you get up to like niche zero, um, trying to think of some other grinders in that price range. That's, that's really where you start uh, DF64 around that price range. So a few hundred dollars more but definitely not something in this small of a package. So um, let's let's brew some coffee together and then I'll talk about my taste experiences and, and my initial impressions and then we'll talk about that other grinder. And uh, yeah, let me know in the chat how you guys are doing, how you guys are doing on this wonderful, wonderful Wednesday night. I am just so excited to jump on here live with you, but let me plug this back in. Now you wanna hear this. I'm sure you wanna hear what this sounds like. So before I put some coffee in here, they have updated this to have a quieter motor and i'll talk more about this in my review again this is just an overview this is just first initial impressions but they've updated the grinder and this is what it sounds like it's pretty quiet let's brew some coffee i forgot a scale i'll be right back <laughs> this is part of uh, live YouTube. This is this is part of the new experience. Just grabbed a scale here. So I'm going to be brewing up a decaf coffee. And this is a wonderful coffee from my friends at Monogram Coffee. Woo! Guys, I'm stoked about this grinder. I can't wait to dive into this. This is intriguing. I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, let's brew this up. Just ran up my stairs. I am out of shape. Twenty grams here. Now, one issue I've seen right away is there's a bit of popcorning. Um, this is a lid. I didn't realize that at first. With the lid on there, you're good. This magnetizes in place, and uh, everything is fine. Also, this is a single dosing grinder, so retention. How is that? Again, I'll talk more about that in my review. But so far, so good. All right, I see some questions coming on in here, which is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna try and answer as many of those at the end of this video. Let's brew a coffee first, talk about it a little bit more. I'll answer some questions and then we're gonna end this one. We won't be a lot long tonight. Let me just dump this out real quick. All right. Now tonight I'm gonna be brewing this on the V60. Again, this is a decaf. It's a little late here. It's about 8.30 at night here in Canada, in Ontario. And so uh, the other night we went live and mistakenly I decided to drink the espresso that I brewed at about 7.30 at night. Well guys, I was up till 2 a.m., 2 a.m. 
I am very sensitive to caffeine. I'm very aware of how much coffee I'm drinking every single day. And I tried to be because I do drink a lot of coffee, obviously. And uh, yeah, that sucked. That was the worst. So I see some questions. It seems slow in a speed comparison to other grinders would be great. And this is slow. Now, one thing I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is essentially a hand grinder burst set with a motor. Essentially, it's a hand grinder with the motor. And so the way that those burrs are designed, the way that they're tested, uh, they're designed with the RPM of what a hand grinder would be. So to throw in a fast motor would just not make sense on a burr set like this. Um, and so keep in mind, when you're hand grinding, you're not, you're not grinding at three, 400 RPM. You're not grinding at 1200 RPM, right? It's, it's a lot slower. And I've ground a little coarse here. And we'll talk about my experiences in a second here. I just want to brew this coffee. Hope you guys are doing well tonight. Okay, I noticed some of you guys are talking about the Obsidian 48 millimeter bursts. Let's talk about that as I'm brewing this. So this model here has the 38 millimeter burrs. I believe they're titanium coated. I received this, my first impressions were pretty good. And so I went online and there was one model left here in Canada with the 48 millimeter obsidian birds and I bought it today. So it's on the way. And so that model, that burr set is the same as this grinder right here. Now this, you guys would might know this grinder from some of my other videos, but if you don't, this is the K Plus from Easy Presso. And this is one of my personal favorite hand grinders in the industry. Now, my one of my favorite hand grinders in the industry for filter coffee is the C40 from Comandante. And the K Plus puts the Comandante to work for a little less money and a nicer overall experience, I would argue. The K plus is great value and has great results. But what's so interesting about the K plus is it's a very similar cup profile to the C40. Slightly different, I've covered that in other videos, but it's very similar. And that burr is in this grinder. It's a slight upgrade, $55 to be precise, to get that uh, obsidian 48 millimeter burr, but it's in this grinder. What? So let me just break this down for you, just so you guys can, can get on the same level with me here. That, that If I'm saying this is the C40, okay, the C40 rivals this grinder right here. Is it better? Arguably no, but this burr, if this is true, and I haven't received the grinder yet, so I'm going to test them, I'm gonna compare them, all of that kind of stuff. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. But if this is true, that means that a grinder this small at under $400, has a similar burr set to like the C40. It is conical, okay, we're not flat, we're not a flat uh, burr grinder, but that could be an incredible, incredible grinder. I'm excited to try it. I'm really excited to test that out. If that's what I think it is, I don't know guys, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. That's why I had to jump on here because I bought this today. I impulse bought it as soon as I received this in the mail. I was impressed. The build quality is great. We'll talk more about that in this upcoming video, but what? The C40 is amazing. Anyways, I'm excited. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys can tell. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Okay, I'm brewing this decaf here. This is taking a little long, but that's okay. We don't, as, as I've talked before, we don't base our results in the cup based on time, uh, especially a decaf. Decafs tend to draw down slightly longer. And uh, because you're lacking caffeine, uh, you don't have as many bitter compounds in the coffee. And so, it's, it's a little harder to get that uh, that bitterness and over extraction. It's totally fine. Some other things I want to do in the future, I want to compare this to the Niche Zero. Okay, you guys know I do love the Niche Zero. It's my daily driver right now. I've got some other grinders coming in this month. 
too many grinders coming in this month. Uh, I normally don't love to do reviews all the time. I like to mix it up, but December is just that month where there's a lot of a lot of new things coming in the mail. Uh, the single dose from Eureka in a couple days, hopefully. Uh, the Weber uh, Workshops Key, that's gonna be coming in hopefully at the end of this month, if not early next month. A lot of grinders, and now this one too. Now I'm gonna be giving uh, some grinders away to my patrons. Uh, there's a link for that down below. I'm also giving away right now Tomorrow I'm going to be launching a giveaway for this guy right here, which is the X bar. It's an espresso brewer. Um, basically anything that I'm not using anymore. I basically give away to my patrons because I don't like to hoard stuff. And so somebody's going to benefit from it. And I'm, I'm glad to do that. I'm glad to do that. People are asking about the sound of this grinder. It's not loud. I would say it's got a different pitch than something like the Niche Zero. It's very similar to like a, it's quieter than the Encore. Okay, if you've ever heard the Encore, it's quieter than the Ode. That's also, I would say, a louder grinder. Um, both of those grinders grind faster than this one. This is a slower grinding grinder, but it's not loud. They updated the motor, the, uh, the initial launch. My friend Josh has done a review on YouTube here. And uh, one of his biggest complaints was that it was incredibly noisy and high pitch. Well, they fixed that. They've changed out the motor for this. Okay. Now, as I was gearing up for this live, the only cup I could find was uh, this one right here. So, cheers. Come on, that deserves a like right there. Oh, gosh. All right, I'm gonna scroll through here, answer some Q and A, uh, and just end with some initial thoughts, and then we're gonna wrap this up here. Can it grind for espresso? I've only had this for a couple days now, but in my experience so far, yes, it can. Yes, it can. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the motor on the Logome uh, Mini, it's, it's not meant to do high volume. And so with espresso, you're gonna put more stress on that motor, and, and Option always talked about that on their website. So keep that in mind. That's not something that they have designed this for, but it's capable of doing that. Especially with that step list, you're gonna have no issues dialing in espresso from my experience. And it's limited by the way. Again, I'll go into more of that in my review. And if any uh, thoughts have changed after a few weeks of using this and the 48 millimeter, I'll be sure to update that in that video. So again, be sure to subscribe if you guys haven't, so you guys don't miss that video. All right, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions here. And we're gonna wrap it up. Can you buy the burst separately? Would be nice to swap out. From my experience, from my knowledge, I don't think you can. In fact, I'm very intrigued by this burst set. Who makes it? Who makes this burst set? You know, I, I know who makes SSP burst, obviously SSP. You know, Option O has their own burst. There, there's so many different manufacturers who make their own burst. Eureka makes their diamond inside. Mazer makes burst. But who is making this burst set for, for Easy Presso and Time More? I don't know. Any of you guys know? If any of you guys know, let me know because I am on the deep search to find out what is going on here because this is fascinating because the results are great. Is it easy to clean? Again, limited experience. Talk more about that in the next video. I feel like I've said that a lot here, but I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, so far, so good. It's a very small machine. You know, it's got this magnetic cup. One thing I will say is that from my experience, uh, some grounds fall, fall down into this tray here. The Niche Zero and some other grinders have like a tray that you can dump. This one doesn't, but again, this is a lot less money. It's very minimal and uh, it's very small, very small. Here's the Easy Presso K Plus in comparison of size. Now this is a hand grinder, guys. This is a hand grinder uh, and it's not massive by any means, but it is Easy Presso's, one of their bigger grinders per se. And uh, it's about the same thickness. You know, it's about the same height, you know, maybe an extra two inches. What? I'm, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. The black one only comes in 48 millimeters. The black one actually comes in 38 millimeters too. Um, from my understanding, I, you can get both, but I believe they're very limited in stock for that 38 in the black. I feel like the black is just hard to get in general. Uh, the silver is much more popular from Optional. Well, let's wrap this up. What are my initial impressions of the Optional Legone Mini? 
I don't have a ton to say other than I'm impressed. It makes good coffee. It's built very well. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this whole conversation, this burr set in this grinder. Uh, how does a 38 millimeter grinder hold up? Well, again, we'll talk about that in my review, but so far, so great. The value, it's not the cheapest grinder on the market, okay? It's not the Encore, it's not the Time More C2. Uh, that's obviously the better value if this is the same burr set, but not everybody wants to hand grind. So there's a lot to be, there's a lot to be said, especially if you want a nice little package, a single dosing first grinder really great build quality, stepless adjustment that can't be overlooked, okay? There are other grinders in this price range, but they are not stepless. And one that can make espresso. Oh man, I'm excited to dive into this a little deeper. Well guys, if you guys haven't yet, do me a huge favor, just scroll down right now, scroll down on this video, hit that like button, it would mean the world to me and it really helps out these videos. Also, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. If you're interested in becoming a patron, there's a link down below. I've also linked the Lego Mini down below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that, but it's down there below as well. Uh, stay tuned for this video. I'm gonna compare this to the 48 millimeter. I'm also gonna compare it to some other grinders like the Niche Zero. How does that compare? How does that contrast? You know, this is, this is a single dose, so is that but that one's a lot more money and they're really hard to find. So how's this all gonna play out? We're gonna dive into that. Have a wonderful night, guys. I love you all so, so much. Continue brew great coffee, guys. Continue brew at home. We will see you guys all in the next live stream. See you guys later.